Okay, it's divided into two parts. Okay, chemical bonding is divided into two parts. One part is going to be known as intramolecular bonding. And second part is known as intermolecular bonding. Now, what is actually the difference between these two? Okay, intramolecular bonding, okay, if I put it in this way, let's say if I have Cl, okay, if I have Cl, and then I have another Cl, okay, and if I copy this, and then I put it here, Let's say I do the same thing here. Now, intramolecular bonding means, okay, intramolecular bonding means is the bonding, okay, that exists between Cl atom and Cl atom. Okay, that is actually the bonding. Uh, this one you would have, uh, you should know, okay, uh, if it is, this is Cl and Cl, they are non-metal and non-metal. So the bonding between Non-metal and non-metal, they are Maxwell. They are called as A covalent bonds. Yeah, covalent bonding. Uh, if you have metal and non-metal, so you are going to have Nicholas Chai, Nicholas Chai. Ionic, ionic, ionic bonding. Metallic bonding is also count, uh, counted here under intramolecular bonding. So I will actually put metal and metal. Okay, that is going to be metallic bonding. I will explain more later. But when we look at the intermolecular bonding, okay, the intermolecular bonding is the bonding between Cl2 and Cl2. So it's the bonding between these two. Okay, it's the bonding between these two. Okay, so we have, okay, uh, the difference over there is intramolecular, they are much more stronger, okay, because they are connecting two atoms, okay. But intermolecular bonding, okay, is not so strong generally, okay, it's not so strong compared to intramolecular bonding, but we cannot ignore them, okay. Under intermolecular bonding, this one we will learn later, Okay, you will learn okay, this following uh, bonding. One is called Van der Waals bonding. Van der Waals forces of attraction. Number two, we will learn as uh, dipole-dipole bonding. Number three, we will learn something that is very common, hydrogen bonding. But don't worry about intermolecular bonding for now. Okay, we will actually focus on the intramolecular bonding. Okay, now... Let's actually come back to intramolecular bonding. Now, under intramolecular bonding, okay, this one I will discuss later as well. Covalent bonding we have, okay, this is actually special for your A-levels here. Yeah? Covalent bonding, we have a special type of bonding, which is going to be, uh, we call it as coordinate dative bonding. So this is another extra. Okay, we will discuss about this later as well. Coordinate dative bonding. So now we will focus on the intramolecular bonding. So I will actually start with ionic bonding first. Okay, let's actually start with ionic bonding. Now for ionic bonding, we know already ionic bonding happens between okay, metal and non-metal. Okay, metal and non-metal. So let's actually take one example, KCl. K is metal, Cl is non-metal. So if I want to actually draw, okay, in chemistry, we have to learn how to draw using cross and dot diagram or dot and cross diagram, okay? So we need to actually learn how to draw using this diagram and we will only use valence electron. Now, what is valence electron? Valence electron is going to be, Owen, you can go to toilet. Now, valence electron is going to be the electrons, okay, that are, at the outermost shell. So how do we determine that? You can refer to the group. Group one, they have one valence electron. Group two, two. 
group 13, 3, group 14, 4, 5, and so on. Okay. Group 17 have seven valence electrons. So you can refer to that. Now, K is group 1, so they will form K plus. Cl chloride is going to be chlor uh, chloride ion. Okay, is going to be from chlorine. It's going to be group 17, so they need one more electron. Okay, so it's going to be negative. Okay, seven valence electron. They always try to reach eight electrons, so they will bring in one electron. So it's Cl minus. Now, if I want to represent this in form of dot and cross diagram. How do I represent them? It's quite simple. Just put K over there. Put a circle there. Okay, then just put a bracket over there. It's a plus, put plus over there. And then for CL, okay, maybe you want to actually draw bigger a bit. Okay, and then, okay, you want to actually show, okay, CL, seven valence electron, seven. And then one more electron is coming from K. So came from K. Put a bracket. Negative. This is how you draw the dot and cross diagram for KCL. Now I'll show you another example. How to draw the cross dot diagram for MgCl2. Now this one, listen carefully, okay, because you will have different ways of writing, but from now on, I want you to follow this method of writing cross uh, or drawing the cross and dot diagram. Okay. Uh, do we accept others? Okay. Based on the marking key that I've seen, okay, the others are not accepted. Okay. So please don't ask me, can I actually draw like this? Okay. Maybe can, but I'm not sure whether you will get the marks according to the marking key in your uh, a levels, yeah. So the one that actually they actually represent in the marking key will be something like this: Mg. Mg is Mg two plus Cl minus. So you need two Cl minus. Okay. So you just need to put Mg. Just put a, a circle over there. Okay, and then put a bracket. Two plus, and then if you have two Cl, okay, you put one Cl here. You put one Cl over there. Okay, and then you just put circle, you put another circle. Okay, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One electron comes over here, one electron comes over here. You put like this, negative. You put like this, negative. This is accepted. Another way that you can write is following the way that it's written in the textbook, which is, okay. You put like this. You put one here, you put another one here. Yeah, this is another way to write. Okay, so which one is not accepted? Since it's not accepted, I just simply draw, yeah? Don't do this. Okay, don't do this. I don't want to see any number two there. Okay, I raise. So these are the two things that is quite common, okay, that you need to actually know how to actually write. Okay, you can choose which one, which one I prefer. Uh, I prefer something like this, okay, because it's easier to see MG left and right. What happens if you have uh, three, for example? So I can actually draw one here. Okay, so three. What happens if I'm sharing with four? I can have another one on top also. Okay, so uh, that is how we draw. Okay, but whatever it is, okay, this is going to be ionic bonding. So I'll stop for a while. Do you have any question up to here? Sharon, any question? Uh, no, sir. Okay. 
hope it's clear okay um i don't think so you need other examples if you need other examples please check the textbook yeah now i will go before i go into covalent bonding okay i will go into metallic bonding first okay because it's much more easier okay metallic bonding okay is the bonding between metal and metal but to be exact it's not really bonding between metal and metal yeah now uh metallic bonding happens okay uh let's say we take one example metal yeah sodium sodium metal okay if i have sodium okay if i draw sodium this is going to be sodium sodium has tendency to yeah michelle you can go now you have they have tendency to lose the electron and if plus so the electron will go out so if I actually uh, redraw this, okay, if I just, if I have another one, okay, if I paste it over here, sorry. Okay, if I have another one here, and then if I have another one here, doesn't matter, I can draw again. Okay, if I have another Na plus, okay, electron will go out. Now, if I have this same situation and I actually redraw another and a plus here. And a plus, and a plus, and a plus. You have electron, you have electron, you have electron. Now what they will actually form, okay? The electrons, okay, they will actually form some kind of clouds. They call it clouds, cloud they will form cloud now once they actually form this cloud okay this electron they actually move they move here they move here they come over here say hi with each other they go here they move they don't stay in one place the same here they will move they will come over here they will move so this one we call it cloud of delocalized electron okay it means the electrons are delocalized they are moving around okay cloud of delocalized electron now we know the charge okay we know the charge of those electron is going to be negative charge negative charge we know the metal cations okay this one is called metal cations okay the metal cations is going to be positively charged we know positive and negative they will attract okay so this will attract with this this will attract with this so if we say metallic bonding okay metallic bonding is actually the bonding between not the metal not the bonding between here and here okay so i will erase here it's not, nothing to do with that it's the bonding between the metal cation and the clouds of delocalized electron the metal cation and the clouds of delocalized electron so this bonding is really really uh, strong so therefore the metallic bonding the boiling point of metal is actually quite high okay but if they ask you to define metallic bonding how do we define now you should understand why i said that metallic bonding is not bonding between metal and metal is the bonding between metal cation and cloud of delocalized electrons is that clear this is how you define metallic bonding okay this one i have actually uh show you according to the diagram okay according to a diagram is there any question up to here 
Kevin, Ken, Ken. yeah. So now, okay, we go into okay the next part, okay, which is going to be covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is quite simple, okay, because we know that covalent bonding is the bonding between non-metal and non-metal. So if we want to actually uh, draw, okay, uh, let's say one example, the common example is uh, Cl2. Okay, let's actually draw Cl2. How to uh, represent, okay, using the dot and cross diagram. Okay, chlorine is going to be group 17, okay. So we know group 17, seven valence electron. Always remember, they want to actually reach the eight electrons, okay. Now, if you want to reach eight electron, you have seven and you want to reach eight electron, you need to borrow, okay? You need to borrow or share one. In order to share one, what you need to do is, you need to actually use your hand and actually out of these seven, you need to actually bring one electron you show to others before you share, okay? It means you left six electrons here. So when you share, if you want to have another electron, it means another person must actually give you one electron as well. So what happens is you are going to have one plus one, two plus six is going to be eight. Okay, to be a uh, two in, in summary, what I mean is if you need one, you need to take your hand and show another one electron. If you need two, for example, your group 16, six valence electron, you need two. You need to take two electron and share it with others. If you are in group 15, five valence electron, you need another three electron. You need to take your three electron and share it with the others, okay? So now if I have Cl2, okay? Cl2, you need one electron, it's eight, uh, seven valence electron. So what I do is CL, I know that I need to actually have another one more electron. So I stand by with one of my electrons, I'm ready to share, okay, ready to share. So if I have another CL, okay, of course, I'm going to actually have something like this, okay, CL. And I know that it will share with another one CL over there. And I know that each CL, seven valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now they have eight. The same thing over here, okay? You just need to put seven and then now they have eight as well. This is what I mean by sharing, okay? So if I actually have another example, okay? For example, let's say I'm talking about oxygen then, okay? O2. Oxygen is going to be group 16, six valence electron, okay? They need two more electrons to reach eight. Okay, what happens is I just put oxygen. Okay, I just put O, put another oxygen. I just put like this. Okay, let's actually do it nicely like this. Now, so I know that oxygen has six valence electrons. I need two more. So they need to actually provide the two electrons first for bonding because they need another two. The same thing, the other oxygen will need to provide as well. And I know that oxygen is group 16, six valence electrons. So you count one, two, three, four, five, and six. Do the same thing over here. But before that, you can see now in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's already complete on the left hand side. On the right hand side, okay, X. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six valence electron. And from the right hand side, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's already complete as well, okay? So this one, okay, if I want to actually write down, this is chlorine and chlorine single bond. This is oxygen and oxygen double bond, yeah? So what happens if you have triple bond? Let's actually see one example with triple bond. N2 is another, uh, one more example, okay? Nitrogen is group 15, five valence electron they need three, okay? So in order to get three, I think you need to share the three, 
Okay, so if I draw nitrogen here, nitrogen, and I have another nitrogen, let's draw. Okay, so now I need three, so I just put one, two, three. So they also share three. Nitrogen group 15, five valence electron, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. So how do I represent this? This is triple bond. Okay, now I'm going to actually teach you another one more term over here. We know that, okay, one electron. So if I have two electron, what we call it? One pair of electron. Okay, one pair of electron. Okay, two electron is one pair of electron. Uh, Thompson, can you tell me how many pair of electron in this part? Three pairs of electron. Now, we also notice that there is one pair of electron here, one pair of electron here. Okay, uh, Ryan, can you tell me the difference between this pair of electron and this pair of electron inside? Which one? Uh, this pair and this pair. It's, it's from a different uh, atom. Okay. The one that is inside is actually from a different uh, atom. Okay, they are being shared. Okay, they are being shared. And the one over here, they are not being shared. Okay, so they are different generally. So we need to actually come up with names for them. Okay, because we cannot say this and that all the time. So the name that is given here, okay, since they are staying alone, okay, they are staying alone, we call it as lone pair of electron. Okay, lone pair of electron. Since they are bonded, okay, we call it bonding pair of electron. Okay, lone pair of electron, bonding pair of electron. How many bonding pair of electrons in N2? So you have three bonding pair. How many lone pair of electrons that you have in N2? Two lone pair. Okay. So let's actually have a look at oxygen, okay? Uh, Yvonne, can you tell me how many bonding pair of electrons here? Two. Two, correct. Okay, uh, Catherine, how many lone pair of electrons in O2? Two. How many lone pair of electrons in O2? Is it my internet uh, not stable? But anyway, it's supposed to be four, yeah? Uh, so four lone pair of uh, electron, okay? So if we actually look at uh, Cl, okay, for Cl, how many bonding pair of Cl? Bonding pair is going to be only one. How many lone pair for Cl2? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six lone pair, okay? I hope you understand this concept. Now, we can actually use this method, okay, this one you see, we actually use this covalent uh, to show for one single type of atom, okay, joined to form molecule. But how about if we actually have, for example, CO2? How do I actually represent this? How do I represent in form of NH3? Okay, let's actually do how, how to represent this, okay, using the cross and dot diagram, okay. Carbon, okay, is going to be group 14, four valence electron. They need four more electrons. It means that they need to actually give away the four also. They need to share. It means all of the electrons of the carbon, they will be ready to be shared. Okay, with how many oxygen? So we have two oxygen, okay, two oxygen. And do remember oxygen is group 16. They need two electrons to reach eight. So it means carbon, the two electrons will go here. Okay. The two electrons will go here. Oxygen will actually be ready to give their two electrons over here. 
they will be ready to give their two electrons over here. So if I want to draw, if I put oxygen, okay, if I draw another one, okay, I will have something like this, okay. And then if I uh, continue, okay, you see for carbon, it's four valence electrons already. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, okay? So four valence electron is already there, okay? For oxygen, I only have two valence electron. I need six electrons, so one, two, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this is going to be the cross and dot diagram for carbon dioxide. So, um, Megan, can you uh, can you tell me how many bonding pair of electron for carbon dioxide? Uh, four. Okay, good. Four bonding pair. How many lone pair for carbon dioxide, uh, Giuliano? Uh, four. Okay, good. Settle as that, done. Okay, so let's actually look for ammonia. Okay, nitrogen is going to be group 15, five valence electron. They need three electrons to uh, reach the eight. Okay, but do remember we are sharing with hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to be one valence electron each. So what's going to happen? You have nitrogen, they need three, so they need to share the three. Okay, so I'm going to actually share the electron here share the electron here, share the electron over here. So if I draw, maybe I'll just draw something like this. And hydrogen, okay, hydrogen will share one electron here, one electron here, one electron here. So I just put hydrogen here. So if I draw, I will have something like this. Now, it's not complete yet because nitrogen is group 15, okay? So nitrogen is going to be one, two, three. You still need to actually put another two more electrons for nitrogen, group 15, okay? So if I want to actually find out how many lone pair of ammonia, okay, lone pair of electrons in ammonia, that's only one lone pair, okay? And how many bonding pair? There are three bonding pair. Okay, I want you to actually understand this concept. Is that clear, everyone? Okay, 